guys. You've just got your new CMOS Astro Cool camera. Some important information must do's when calibrating those beautiful photos you've just took out there in the heavens of stars. Let's discuss these matters and get your processing of your Astro pictures a breeze in comparison. guys we're here in pics in sight at the minute at Wayne's cave just trying to sort out a few calibration issues with uh, flats darks flat darks dark flats whichever we want to call it Warren Keller himself he's quite specific on how he likes to get the two words the right way around um, which is fair enough uh, but um, yeah, I just wanted to quickly just let you know the experience I've just had recently when coming down to calibrating and processing uh, an image of the Rosette Nebula I've, I've just been working on. Um, I say just been working on. Uh, uh, currently, today, it's um, New Year's Eve. So happy New Year to you all. But um, I've got the fantastic three, four hours, I think four hours, just over four hours on the rosette on Christmas Eve. So, uh, there's always a good time for astrophotography, even on the night of Christmas. Uh, so, I just wanted to show you the difference in in flats that I, I've, I've just let basically experienced. And, and I was just amazed at and shocked at the big difference between doing something right, doing something not quite right. Uh, but yeah, we'll walk through and I'll show you these flats and I'll show you the effects that I found that my flats were having. And uh, hopefully it'll help you guys avoid sort of a two day long journey like I had in breaking down the details to try and suss out exactly what uh, was going on in, in my situation. And this may have helped you avoid the same. <laughs> Before we get into the screen, um, I just wanted to show you my flat panel I use. And it's it's just a, it's, see how thin they are, it's ever so handy and it's USB powered. It will come, I think they come with a little USB lead. Um, but you've usually got loads of spare ones, haven't you? But it, this is is handy. It's a tracing board, I believe, that for you know uh, putting a light through to trace arty stuff with. And you can adjust this one has three brightness levels, uh, which is handy um, for my refractor and my settings. I actually just have it on the dimmest, and then actually put up now put a couple of sheets of paper in front of that uh, and take my flats. Your flats, I'd, you know, ideally, every time a lot of us are taking our telescopes outside, setting it up, but I do bear, just bear that in mind. You, you, you're physically moving it. Knowing that that imaging train in the end lens, if there's, if there's been a little fly that, or <laughs> a bit of dust or, crap on your lens you don't want to move that when you're carrying it back in the house you know, and that should be fine if you're careful rest it down there carefully and just try and take them flat frames as soon as you can yeah so you've got to be careful remembering what you're doing between sessions and what flats are going to apply to what data because it is you could you see how easy it is to lose track of exactly what you need to be calibrating what you're calibrating with it's a, a note worthy of, of taking on board and that was it we'll try and jump in if my screen recorder will let me all right guys see you in a bit uh, so there's 
the second flat, uh, master flat from the second bunch of flats that I retook for my um, Rosette Nebula integration. Um, obviously, visually, kind of looks there or thereabouts what you'd expect. Um, for a start, the exposure difference in my flats, the original bunch I'm using, so for the integration, I'm using the same darks. About I can't remember 30 odd of, 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 of darks. The, the first bunch of flats, the exposure times were 0 0.56 seconds long. The second bunch of flats that I took were 2.9 seconds long. Now, here's the results. If you bear with me, let me open. <clears throat> So that's new flats, then original rosette and uh, the third, third trial of integration, well calibration and integration. Uh, yeah, this is the integration from the first lot. Monumental difference. See? These are the same light frames, exactly the same light frames, exactly the same dark frames I used to calibrate. The only difference, and I hadn't moved my image and train, don't forget, if, if anything, you know, the, these flats on the left that I used, these were took the next morning, you know, so as, as, as close as you can to, to the image acquisition. It was only two days later after banging my head against the wall with this on the left. And I, I retook them. And I retook my frame, set my parameter to it's the same ADU. Here on the left, I set it to 32,000 ADU. And here on the right, it's the same, 32,000 ADU. The only, only difference in this whole scientific experiment, if you like, was the exposure length. On the left, there's 30 odd flats, maybe even 40 flats, I think I might have to 0.56 seconds long, so just over half a second long. On the right, 2.9, so nearly three seconds long. So these CMOS sensors, it absolutely is imperative, and I should not look back from this moment because I know which picture out of these two integrations would you like to process. And move forward with because I know this on the right I would certainly like to face this over this any day of the week you know if you if you if you think if you're getting sort of stuff like this and it's sort of a messy final acquisition maybe just apps just scrap your flats all together if you don't know if you are 110% committed on your flats and thinking that they're going to actually calibrate something out or calibrate an, an accurate measure, don't include them. And uh, uh, the, This is my, for a one shot colour, in my scenario here, and I want to show you why. Just This is the lights calibrated against my darks, because that's all I had, that master dark, master light. It's there. Of course it is. Uh, there we go. Let's just stretch this look. Just to show you, it's uh, straight out of the can, so to speak. And this, I would, um, when you look, I would much prefer to move forward with this than this. This on the left, this rose on the left, was a nightmare. Absolute nightmare. I spent a whole, virtually a whole day sat on my computer, try, you know, trying to learn more and, and, and clean this up not a chance not a chance you know if i show you this is what i call the better final but i'm not 100 percent committed to that i could show you the bad examples of that rosette how how it didn't sort of didn't go very well but you know this is from this on the right is not a bad effort this is to give you an idea sort of two point 
2.9 hours, but uh, roughly three hours exposure on this with the magnificent QHY 268. So there, there we have it, guys, and there's zero flat. So I'd rather take the risk. Sorry, I'd rather eliminate bad flat calibration totally and take take the punt up cleaning up a shot, um, you know, and in integration without it than just bung on a bung on any old flats not that i was doing that but it's only small margins with these flats and then it could actually do more harm than good so definitely before you start struggling to proceed with processing your images like i was doing suss out what is being calibrated and and, and just to, to what effect well, that's it really guys thanks for tuning in and thanks a lot happy new year and May the dark skies be with us.